Galatians chapter 6, uh, the Apostle Paul is dealing with a church uh, that has basically been infiltrated with what we call Judaizers. Uh, and what has happened is if you go back to chapter 1, I'll read this. Uh, he said in verse 6 of chapter 1, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you uh, into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, uh, let him be a curse. And as I said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that you have received, let him be a curse. There's only one gospel, and that of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's the death of burial and the resurrection. But what was going on here in the church of Galatia uh, is the Jews. The circumcision had kind of slipped in, and they were wanting to add uh, work with grace. And the Apostle Paul, he tells us at one point, if it's of the law, then it is no longer of grace. And you've got to understand that. Uh, if you're going to work your way into heaven, then you're going to have to do it by good works, but there's not enough good works to get you there. And uh, there's not enough law to keep that can get anybody to heaven, but uh, by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ to save you, that's how you get to heaven today. And that's exactly how we serve the Lord. We do serve Him with good works, uh, uh, but that's because we are saved. But let's look in verse 12 of, of Galatians chapter 6. And your Bible says, As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, and they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution uh, for the cross of Christ. You realize there's persecution in the cross. Now the cross itself is persecution, but the cross of Christ brings persecution and that on our life. You have to understand that, verse 13. For neither, for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me. And I, under the world, you can be seated this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We thank you in that for your wonderful mercy and uh, the grace that you have so abundantly given to each and every one of us. There may be somebody here today that's lost and does not know you. I pray they'd get saved today. Uh, but Lord, these dear people have not come to hear me. They've come to hear from you. And Lord, I just uh, try my best to be a willing vessel this morning to preach what you've given us and what I believe would be the message for the hour. Would you please guard our mind and guard our thoughts this morning and hinder Satan from this meeting and keep him far away from the minds of people and from mine too. And uh, Lord, that we'd be focused in that upon the Word of God. Lord, that the Holy Spirit could deal with people's hearts today that need help and need direction and uh, maybe they need just some exhortation and edification. Maybe somebody's lost and they need to come and get saved. We sure do love you, Lord, and thank you for Jesus who loved us enough to come and die for us so that we might be saved. It's Him that we want to see about for a little while today. And we'll tell you again that we love you. Meet with us today and stir in our hearts. And we're so thankful that when we cry out, you hear and you answer. Move today for these things in Jesus' name. We do pray, amen and amen. As we look in these three verses, as Paul was closing uh, his letter to the church of Galatia, and uh, he was dealing with them one more time about what the Jews were uh, trying to do. It said over here that they that be of the circumcision uh, uh, was wanting them to keep the law. But he said they don't even keep the law. And he said what they want to do is make a fair show. Now notice he said it's a show uh, uh, in the flesh. I've got a message that I preach sometimes is uh, when it's all just a show. I'm going to tell you the way some people... Uh, put on and, and try to act like they live for Christ. Uh, uh, it's just a show. He just wanted to, uh, these Judaizers wanted to be able in that to uh, glory in these other people's uh, 
uh, flesh and, and supposedly what they had done uh, uh, for the Lord. But notice when you come down here in verse 14, uh, uh, the apostle Paul said, but God forbid that I should glory uh, uh, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the apostle Paul said, if there's any reason to glory, uh, uh, it's because of the cross this morning. Uh, I was reminded as I studied this, I, I thought about what Brother Larry Seals said uh, 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 some time back when he came to preach for us. Uh, uh, he said, if you'll make much of the Lord, uh, then he'll make much of whatever you're doing for him. And I thought, man, what a true statement. And this is what the Apostle Paul is, is saying right here, uh, is the only thing that we have to make much of uh, and that we have to glory in, uh, uh, that's in the cross uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now uh, that word glory simply means brightness or splendor, uh, or it means magnificence. Uh, uh, it means to honor, to praise, or to fame, or it is also uh, uh, the divine presence uh, or the manifestation of God's presence. Uh, you know, when you look in the Bible, you find glory. I, I mentioned all through the Bible. You remember in the book of Exodus, I, uh, there that word is remember again honey she tells me you get up there and preach and say we don't remember some of that stuff that you remember sometimes but if you read your Bible you ought to remember some things uh, uh, in the book of Exodus chapter 33 you remember uh, uh, what Moses wanted to see uh, uh, Moses wanted to see and had uh, uh, the glory of God and, and the Lord said in verse 18 uh, as Moses said I beseech thee show me thy glory uh, and in verse 22 he said it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by that I'll set thee, put thee uh, in the cliff of the rock. I'll cover thee with my hand uh, while I pass by. You know what Moses wanted? Uh, he wanted to see the glory of God. He wanted to see God in uh, all his glory. In Exodus chapter 40, uh, uh, they kind of got, you know, Moses, he got to see the hinder part uh, uh, of God as he passed by, you know, in the cliff of the rock. You want to see God? Uh, uh, get in the cleft of the rock, amen. Some of you understand what I'm talking about right there. Uh, uh, you find yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, uh, you'll get to see the glory of God uh, uh, passed by Exodus chapter 40. Uh, uh, they had the tabernacle out there, uh, uh, and, and God descended, uh, and His glory descended uh, upon that tabernacle. First Kings chapter 8, uh, uh, when they dedicated and they had uh, uh, the temple over there, uh, uh, the Bible said in verses 10 and 11, uh, uh, that the glory of God filled the temple uh, uh, that they couldn't even work in there uh, like they needed to. Hey, I'm kind of like David in Psalm chapter 63. Uh, oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy glory, to see thy power and thy glory uh, so as I've seen thee in the sanctuary. David said, Lord, uh, uh, it's been a long time. I, he said, I'm dry and I'm thirsty. I'm tired. I, my flesh is give out. I, and he said, I just need to see your glory I, I, for a little while. Let me ask you something. You ever come to that place in your life I, I, to where you say, Lord, I, I just need you to come by I, for a little while. I just need you to show up I, I, for a little while. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I, most of the time, I, I, I'm glad God will meet with me I, and speak to my heart. But you know, those times, I, I, it gets to dry. Those times, I, I friend, that I want to uh, where he's at those times uh, uh, that I wonder what's going on and all I need uh, uh, is the glory of God to pass by and show up sometimes. And boy, David said, I just want to see you like I've seen you in the sanctuary. Boy, I'm telling you, I like to see God come by in the church house. Say, man, I do. I like to see him uh, move. I like to see things uh, uh, get out of my control sometimes. I do, I mean, I'm not, not out of control, but I'm talking about out of my control. I, I, I'm talking about, you know, I, I get ready for Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, and I come in here and I get ready to preach, and I, we get ready to sing, I, I, but I like it when God's got other plans. I, and boy, He begins to move in folks' hearts. I, I listen, some of the best times we've ever had in here, I, I, it's when we just got out of the way. I, I just give God our heart and just let Him move. I, hey, I'm telling you, we see his glory come by. Amen. 
I ain't talking about letting things, I, I friend, get out of order, but I'm talking about letting things get out of our hands I, and put them in his hands, amen. I miss that, friend, I'm telling you sometimes. But he said, I want to see your power and your glory. Boy, I'm telling you what I'm afraid of is sometimes we end up like 1 Samuel chapter 4. 1 Samuel chapter 4, Hophni and Phinehas has took that ark and they went out to fight the Philistines. Now they were sons of Belial. That was Eli's two boys. And the children of Israel have went out to fight the Philistines in 1 Samuel and they take the ark out there and the ark uh, uh, gets uh, uh, took away from the children of Israel. And they come back and not only that, Hophni and Phinehas, uh, uh, they both end up getting killed uh, out there in the battle. Uh, uh, and the Bible tells us that when they come back, uh, uh, that they tell Eli, who's the priest at this time, uh, uh, what's happened? They come back and said, Hophni and Phinehas uh, uh, has died. Uh, and he said, but what about the ark? Listen, that, that tells me something about Eli. Now, I have no doubt he loved his boys, but he wanted to know about that ark because within that ark, God uh, had placed his glory and his divine presence uh, and his divine power uh, upon that ark. He said, what about that ark? And he said, they took that ark. And the Bible said that he fell off, fell off that stool backwards and fell and broke his neck and died. And we come to 1 Samuel chapter 4. After all that's happened, and Phineas' wife uh, uh, is, uh, is near having a child. And when she hears all of this, when she hears about her husband dying, when she hears about her father-in-law dying, when she hears that the ark is took from Israel. The Bible said in verse 20, and about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. Didn't matter. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel, because the ark of God was taken, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, the glory is departed from Israel for the ark of God is taken. I'm afraid, if we're not careful, that, boy, I'm telling you, that we'll lose the glory of God in our services. That we'll lose the glory of God uh, upon our life. You know, that's the thing. God moved in the temple and the tabernacle uh, and the glory of God rested. And Paul tells us uh, in the book of 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 6, uh, uh, both are chapter 3 and chapter 6, I believe it is, that now we are the temple of God. And we need the glory of God resting upon our life. Job talked about how that he had stripped me of my glory, but how we need to give glory under the Lord. I want to look at three things right here about glorying in God and glorying in the cross. Lord, you help us now. He said, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. How do we glory uh, in the cross? You remember what I told you a few minutes ago that uh, if we would make much of Jesus, he would make much of what we're doing for him. And I say that first of all, when we glory in the cross, that we lift up the one uh, uh, who went to the cross. I'm telling you, when we lift up him, I, I mean, it makes all the difference uh, uh, in the world. Take your Bible and go to the book of Isaiah uh, chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53, most of us know this uh, passage of Scripture over here. And I, I'm not going to tell you anything that you don't know this morning. Uh, but Isaiah chapter 53, he said in verse 1, Who hath believed our report? To whom and to whom uh, is the arm of the Lord revealed? And he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. 
He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. And he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. You want to know why we're to lift him up? I have nothing more than for verse 6. Then it was at Calvary. I friend at the place of Golgotha that God imputed my sin. And that to Jesus Christ. And Jesus took my judgment uh, that day at Calvary uh, and boy God looked down uh, and if you look in verse 11 uh, and he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied hey uh, uh, I'm telling you this morning because of what Jesus uh, uh, done at Calvary I forgave uh, of my sin I'm fit for heaven now and I can live for him uh, and have freedom in his life uh, and that from the devil amen Hey, he's worthy. Uh, Lord, help us now. I think somebody ain't getting this. Uh, uh, listen, he's worthy. Uh, uh, and that for me and you uh, uh, to give him glory today. Amen. Hey, I'm telling you, uh, uh, he went to Calvary. Uh, he paid uh, for our sin. Hey, I'm telling you, we, uh, I thought as I played that piano and we sung while the ages roll, I, I thought, dear Lord, we all ought to be shouting this morning. Uh, hey, because we're going to get over there one day uh, and it's going to be a good day when we get there. Amen. Man, why? Because of Him. Listen, we ought to just glory in Him. We, I come to church so many times and I, I know that I need to preach and there are certain things that we need to preach and you need exhortation and, and encouragement, but God help us I, I to never get away from Jesus I, who loved me and died for me that I could get saved. Amen. Boy, when we glory in Him and lift Him up and raise Him up I, I, because of what He done, I thought about this as, as you read the, the rest of verse or chapter 53. I, I, it talks about He was oppressed and He was afflicted, yet opening not His mouth. And I, He has brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before His shears, I, His numb so openeth not His mouth. I, I thought about you, remember that eunuch in the book of Acts, I, I, chapter 8 of that, and He was reading I, I, this verse scripture and God sends Philip down there uh, and God said Philip go join yourself uh, uh, into that chariot uh, and so he runs up there and he does that and he heard him reading that uh, and Philip said understandest thou what thou readest he said how can I except somebody tells me something and you know what the Bible said? I, I then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Boy, I'm telling you, Philip got over her and got to making much about Jesus uh, and it made all the difference uh, in that eunuch's life. But I'm glad somebody told me about Jesus. When I think about them Sunday school teachers when I was growing up, them women that probably didn't think there was any hope for that little kid in their Sunday school class. I'm telling you, I do. I appreciate my Sunday school teachers that I had growing up. We was all boy. I mean, old boy, and and probably didn't think that we were listening. Sometimes we weren't listening. But boy, I'm glad they trudged on through. And every Sunday morning, they took us in there. And they tried their best to teach us the Bible. And preachers that stood uh, and just pray. Hey, I'm telling you, I remember uh, what... uh, uh, what one old time preacher said he said them preachers that's before us uh, uh, they didn't know a whole lot uh, uh, they didn't know a lot of doctrine uh, uh, but they know enough to preach Jesus uh, and get people saved hey something to that right there friend I'm telling you if you take an old boy that don't know anything but he knows Jesus he can do something then He can do something. What was it that the Bible talked about over there about Peter and John? They were going to pray. The Bible said over there uh, that they perceived that they were unlearned men, uh, but they knew that they had been with Jesus. You can take somebody that don't even know how to read, but you let them tell the good old story about Jesus in Calvary and lift him up. Boy, I'm telling you fellas, preaching 
We ought not to ever get away from the cross and what Jesus had done. Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2, Paul said, Now, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. There's power in that old story right there. There's power in the story of the cross. Paul said, I'm not going to glory in anything save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to remember what happened. Why do you think that we have the Lord's Supper? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, when we have the Lord's Supper. You remember what he said this do in remembrance of me. We remember that broken body and that shed blood. And listen, when we preach, fellas, we need to lift up uh, uh, and that the cross on high and give glory uh, unto him this morning. Boy, when we sing about it, we ought to sing about him and what he done. Now they some good quartet songs. And they some songs in this book that are probably they got a good melody and they've got a good sound to it. But friend, I'm gonna tell you, if it ain't about him, I don't want to do it. I'm being honest to you. I mean, I, I'm just being honest this morning. When we sing, I just want to sing about him. Because you know what? I know if we'll glory in him. He's liable to come by. He's just liable to come by. When we get our heart in a place to where we just want to praise Him and give Him glory for what He done at Calvary. When we want to give Him glory for what He's moved and done in our life. Well, I mean, listen, I know that we don't venture far past Calvary. I understand that. But I'm telling you, those things that God's done for you uh, and moved in your life, uh, uh, just as, as, as Brother Lewis sung, uh, as my wife sung, uh, it's so peaceful. Hey, I'm glad that when we get in his arms uh, and he hugs upon us, uh, hey, there's times that he's come by and made himself evident and been faithful to me. And hey, he's worthy to be praised this morning. He's worthy to be praised. Glory in Him. I was going through my Bible this morning and for a little while I was reminded of some things. Most of y'all know this. I always carry one card. I carry two cards now. I still got your birth announcement. I don't do nothing. It stays in there. But and I still got a picture of me and and Daryl Fox from the nursing home. It's Val uh, Saint Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day. They got me in a green hat to take a picture there with, with Daryl. But I'm always reminded as I read that card right there, that was, uh, and I wrote on the back of it uh, to be reminded in case I ever forgot who gave it to me. And I just simply wrote that it was given to me by Miss Tammy. But that was one of them days that, uh, boy, I kind of needed the Lord to shine on me. I, you may not have been there, but boy, this preacher's been there. And, and, and listen, and, and, and it's kind of crazy. It ain't, like the, it, it ain't like, I mean, that the world was crashing down. And I mean that uh, everything bad had happened to me. I, I mean, it wasn't that kind of day. But I guess I was just having a pity party for myself and feeling bad. Wondered if what I was doing was accomplishing anything for God. Wondered if I even needed to be doing what I was doing. And I said, Lord, just let somebody, when I go over to the nursing home, tell me that I've been a help or a blessing. I even forget how I worded it. And, uh, but I just needed some help. My, most of y'all know the story. I, I went over there and I, I sung that morning and I preached that morning. And, and uh, I, I remember getting my guitar and carrying it out. And I was going out the front door and I thought, Lord... They ain't nobody said nothing to me at all day. But you know, when I walked in the door, when I went in, not when I was going out, but when I went in, Miss Tammy handed me this card. And by the way, Miss Tammy, she's gone on to heaven now. And uh, as I was 
just it's amazing how God answers prayer sometimes. And I took his card and I just shoved it in my Bible. Didn't even open it, didn't even read it. And that would have been on a Friday. So I went over on Fridays and sung and preached. Maybe they'll let me back in one day, Sister Margie. And I'll never forget, she handed me this card. And sometime that week, I seen it in my Bible. And I thought, I need to open that and read it. And it said, Dear Mark and Kelly, I hope you and your family have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And then she said this. She said, Mark, you have been a blessing to me. You preach some good services. And then it says, you are a blessing to me again. And you can see how she wrote. You know, just plain, plain handwriting. And that was from the heart. That was from the heart from Miss Tammy. If y'all remember Miss Tammy, that was from her heart right there. And I not only got to hear it once, but I got to hear it twice that I was a blessing over there. And I just sat down in my study and I cried and I thanked God for what He had done and for the answered prayer. But you know what? When we'll lift Him up and say, Lord, I know You died for me for, at Calvary. And boy, I want to praise You for that. But I want to glory in, in what You've done for me since then. You know, that's why we have testimony sometimes around here. It's just so you can tell what God's done for you. It's good for you to glory in Him. It's good for you to raise up Him I, I, and praise Him. We sing about Him, but then we need to talk about Him. We need to give Him praise and glory I, uh, from our lips, you know. Well, I'm telling you, when we lift Him up, He said, but God forbid that I should glory saving the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and what He's done. I'm glad I know Him. I'm glad I know more than just knowing something about Him, but I know Him as my Savior. I hope you do today. Well, He went to Calvary so that you could get saved. He went to Calvary so that we could have peace and joy and comfort. And boy, I mean have peace in our life today. But we lift Him up. Let me ask you, when we sing, are we lifting Him up? Are we lifting Him up? In our daily life, I'm getting ahead of this, are we lifting Him up? Whether we feel like it or not, we ought to do it. You know that? Now let, let me say this, church, and I'm going to move on. But I like it when the Lord squeezes on my heart and them tears roll out. Boy, that makes me want to praise Him. I like that. I like feeling that way. But you know, when we come in here on Wednesday night and we face the world for three days since Sunday and we're tired and we're giving out and all you want to do is go back home or still praise the Lord. You should still want to raise your hand. You should still want to get up in the choir and sing. I remember we come in here one Wednesday night and man, we just had a little trouble, not in the church, but just about the church and uh, some, some people bothering the church, let's say that. And I'll never forget on that Wednesday night, we got up there in the choir and Brother Jeff, uh, he called out page 162 and we were singing, living by faith. And man, it's just, it's just like, boy, when we begin to sing and talk about living by faith in Him, I don't know if it happened for anybody else, but I'm telling you, it's just like God come by and it was, whew. it's just like he, I mean the pressure was let off. I mean, it's just like God just come by and just let the pressure off and it's just like everything's okay now. Well, I'm like it when he comes by and you know everything's gonna be okay. You ever been there? Or you just know everything's going to be okay. So preacher, you can't know that. Hey, I can tell you by the grace of God that we know that. I can tell you by the grace of God that He can make it okay, friend. No matter what happens, He can make it okay. You remember I told you a couple of Sundays ago when talking about uh, uh, Him trying our faith. We, we, we don't mind if He brings us up to the furnace. But Lord, please don't put us in that furnace. But you know what them boys said? 
He said, King, it don't matter. It don't matter what happens. He's going to deliver us one way or another. And they had to get in that furnace, but even getting in that furnace, them boys knew it was going to be okay. You know, sometimes we, we think it'll just be okay because he'll make everything all right in our eyes, but sometimes it ain't going to be all right in our eyes, but he'll make it okay anyway. I'm glad the Lord's good and he does that. But then we got to do what the Apostle Paul said. We lift him up. We glory in him. But then we have to leave our glory behind. Paul says right here, you know, they want to make a show of you in the flesh and those that are circumcised want you to be, but they're not going to keep the law. And He said, but God forbid that I should glory. Do you know there's no other glory that men you can have except in him. We can't glory in ourselves. The Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 7, for I know that is in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. You know, there's nothing good about us to glory in. Do you realize that? There's nothing good about me and you. This morning. Take your Bible and go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I want you to look in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And look in verse 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Look in verse 25. He says, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should what? Glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. You know, we have nothing to glory of in ourselves. We have nothing that we can thumb our lapels and I say, look at me at what I've done or look at what I've accomplished or think well I, I, about ourselves. I was reminded as uh, I studied this again, I thought about Luke chapter 18. Uh, and in verse 9, the Bible said, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. But now notice what they done. They trusted in themselves. Two men went up in the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. You know that publican was one that was a tax collector. And he was hated and he wasn't thought much of. And the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I face twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. He thought pretty highly of himself, didn't he? He stood before God and thumbed his lapels and told God all that he done. Can I tell you that God knows what we do and what we don't do? Can I tell you that God knows where your heart is in your work even? He knows whether it's real or not or whether you're just doing it to be seen. That's scary, ain't it? That's scary. I always wonder about my motives sometimes. Am I doing it for the right reason? The Bible said in verse 13, And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I believe it was A.W. Tozer. I'd have to go back and look. I'm not, but I believe it was that uh, he was coming by a street preacher one day and uh, he heard him say, if you want to get saved, I, I just call out to the Lord and just ask him to be merciful unto you a sinner. He said, preacher, is that all it takes? Yeah, that's all it takes. See, it's not, it's not the matter of the mouth, I, it's the matter of the heart. See, it's the matter of the heart. When you come to Christ, I, 
you cry out from the heart. And they said he went home and climbed up in the attic. I don't know why he you told went and got in the attic, but said he went and climbed up in the attic and cried out, God be merciful unto me, a sinner. And he got saved. Some of the best messages you'll ever hear preached was by A.W. Tozer. But the Bible said he would not lift up so much his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Oh, would to God that we'd see ourselves that way. I believe in putting on my best when I come to preach, when I come to church. But oh, would to God that we'd see ourselves as just that vile sinner that he saved. That we were wretched and poor and didn't have nothing. And that we was without nothing and we still without nothing if we ain't got him and we ain't praising him. Boy, I forget that so much, church. I really do. I forget that through the day. I forget that it's all about him. I forget that sometimes. But Jesus went on to say, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. If you're going to glory in him, then you've got to leave your glory behind. They can't be anything good about you that you want to stand and tell everybody about. They can't be anything good about you. I'm always reminded, it seems like through the week, and uh, God just kind of reminds me a little bit that, son, it ain't about you, it's about me. Yeah, I understand we're going to be judged on our stewardship, but friend, I'm telling you, when I stand before him, I want it to be about him. I want, I want it to right here be about him. Second Corinthians 10, But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord, for not he that commendeth himself is approved by whom the Lord commendeth. I don't need my praise. I need God's praise. Amen. I don't need to toot my own horn. I need God to toot His horn toward me. Remember we go back to this statement here. If you'll make much out of the Lord Jesus Christ, He'll make much out of what you're trying to do for Him this morning. How much do we glory in Him? We come back to the text scripture. But God forbid that I should glory saving the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. And then if you want to glory in Him, you're going to have to live by that cross. You're going to have to lift up that cross. You're going to have to leave yourself and glory in Him. But then you're going to have to live by that cross. What are you talking about? Let me put it to you like this. The Apostle Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. This cross right here, if you're going to lift it up and glory in it, then you're going to have to live by it. Let me put it to you another way. Jesus said in Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, I believe it was, He said, if any man will come after me, He said, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. It is a life of crucifixion. It is a life and that of crucifying yourself and separating yourself uh, and that out of this world. I mean, knowing this first of all, or knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, is what He said in Romans 6. The old man is crucified that the body of sin might be destroyed, that we henceforth, uh, that we henceforth, mm, that henceforth we should not serve sin. If we're going to live by the cross and glory in the cross, then we're going to have to crucify ourselves on that cross. Are we crucified with Him? Galatians 5, if you back up, just one chapter in verse 24, He said, after he talked about the works of the flesh and then he talked about the fruits of the Spirit. In verse 24 he said, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Boy, that's talking about drawing near to Him and living for Him. That's talking about killing the old man and letting the old man be alive. That's talking about separating out of this world. Does our daily life bring glory and that to the Heavenly Father and His beloved Son. Does our daily life, do we live such a lie that boy, that folk can see Christ in us? Does He get glory out of our life? Well, if we live by this cross, 
it will. We sing that old song sometimes, in the shadow of the cross. You know, it asks the question, are you living in the shadow of the cross? Boy, if you're going to live in the shadow, you know, that's why the preacher can get up and preach on Calvary. And you can be sinning that week or you can be wrong with him. And he won't even preach on your sin. But you'll feel like a low down dirty scoundrel because of your sin. Why? Because of the cross. You preach on Jesus and what he done, you ought to feel sorry for your sin. I ought to feel sorry for my sin. Glorying in the cross is more than just coming to church on Sunday and raising your hand. It's more than singing about it. And I'm glad it is. And it's more than preaching about it. But it's living that life. If we're going to glory in Him, then we're going to have to make ourselves dead to this world and alive to Him. It is a faithful saying, 2 Timothy 2 said, For if we be dead with Him, we shall also live with Him. Our old man's got to die. It's got to die. Luke 9, again I go back. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Boy, when we lose it for him, crucified for him, dead in him, living contrary and opposite of this world for him, that brings glory. Can I, can I say this? Let, let me say this and then I'm going to close. When, when we live like this world, we're just robbing Him of His glory. We're robbing Him of His glory, friend. We ought to be separate and be different this morning. Let's live by the cross. We lift up the cross and give Him glory. We leave our glory behind. We can't, we can't magnify ourselves. But then we've got to live by the cross to glory in Him. Let's bow our heads this morning.